our feeling great. Om Shanti and welcome to Light of Knowledge. In the search of our identity, we believe that we are our designations, our positions, our age and our names. Is this true? Well, trivial as it may sound, many people derive their respect, their identity from these labels. Let's dispel some of these myths in our conversation with Sister Shreya from the Brahma Kumaris. Welcome to the show, Sister. Thank you. Om Shanti. Sister, there are so many labels, like I was saying, that we use to define ourselves. And I think one very prominent label is that of our position, mm -hmm. which is, you know, the designation that we have in the corporate world, as well as the position that we have otherwise in society or at home. Um, why do you see us being so, so, so dependent on these designations and positions? Positions and designations, I think the word in itself brings some sense of power. Mm. You know, the moment you hear position, maybe especially at the workplace, you know, especially in companies, mm. that position gives you a sense of power. Mm. And you derive that power, respect, approval, recognition. And sometimes you, you have that desire to get that position. Mm. It is actually lack of self-respect. Mm. There's a void. There's a mm. void within to want to have a position, there's nothing wrong. You know, mm. I desire for a position, it's fine. But to desire a position so that I get that recognition, I get that power, then there's something wrong. Mm. You know, sister, when you speak, it takes me back to a scenario back in childhood. And I'd like to share it with you. Sure. Um, uh, I was 15, head girl of my school, and I had a very fancy uniform with badge, sash, lapels, everything at mm. all. <laughs> and um, on the completion of my tenure, I had to hand over all of this as a part of the handover ceremony to my successor, mm. where I had to formally take off, you know, each of these, the badge, the sash and lapels and hand it over to her. And I recall having a sort of an identity crisis at mm -hmm. that point in time, because the entire process of taking off every bit of that uniform and the most important part of the uniform, which said head girl, mm. my position, taking that off, giving it to her, it really made me feel completely naked at the end of the ceremony. When the school made you the head girl, I'm sure they made you the head girl because you could contribute something to the school. You had a talent or a speciality or a skill. And they thought that if you put all that, you contribute all that, you can bring benefit to the school. But every position, maybe head girl or any designation, also gives you or gets some regard. Because mm. of course, you have some talent in you to get that position. And the moment you sit on that position, people around you start to look at you in a very different way. The regard you get from them. Mm. If you get attached to your position, mm. position is fine, you can contribute a lot. But if you get attached to that position and at attached to that respect that you're getting, then you feel naked. Mm. Because then you realize that the moment I'm going to take off this patch, something will change. You know, one is the respect that you take because of your attributes, mm. your character, your strength, and the other is just for the role. Yeah. Now, if I'm taking only for the role, I fear that I will lose it someday. Even, you know, those lows last months when it's nearing, mm. nearing that where you'll have to give it to somebody else, there also this, there is this feeling of vacuum, you know, you're going to lose something. And you acquired it for a purpose. The purpose was finished. You should be proud and you should feel good now to give it to somebody else mm. so that now they can contribute their talents and skills. But we fear losing it. I can actually relate to what you're saying because, you know, the months up to that ceremony, I was counting the days. Mm. Okay, 30 days more, 29 days more. It was like a countdown because I was so afraid of losing that position. And the day after the ceremony, uh, not the day, in fact, it was the evening after the ceremony got over and I had to go back into the school bus. I was not the head girl anymore. I was just an average, ordinary school girl. And um, it was a very different feeling because nobody in the bus looked at me. I didn't get a seat reserved for me. I had to go <laughs> standing. So that when that position went away, all the entitlements with that position also seemed to disappear. And it was very, very hard to swallow that. 
actually what i think when the position goes away only thing that goes away is the responsibility Mm. the position brings a lot of responsibility a mm. lot of work so that it eases the administration process for the school also so the moment you give over hand over that position to somebody you should feel free <laughs> because there's a little less responsibility mm. but you realize because you're feeding your soul with that mm. and maybe it's not genuine respect mm. when people genuinely respect you they will still offer the seat mm. but if they're doing only out of fear Mm. or they are doing only because you have that seat then everything just goes they are not mm. fearful anymore they don't have to give you that regard because they were just doing because you had that label mm. and now that you don't have that label they are not confined to it mm. so i think the thing to tell myself or even the, those others who are watching that when there is a change in designation or a loss of position you are only handing over the responsibility right you are not losing a part of yourself no you're not losing a part your part of yourself and actually you should feel very good mm. now you're giving somebody else a chance to contribute mm. we don't want to do that you know sometimes we feel so superior mm. we don't we don't even allow the talent of other person to come out because we think okay now they will be in the limelight yeah so actually it is it is being very humble you know okay now it's your turn and why don't you take it forward and mm. if you do it with that that giving attitude you will get lot of blessings because they really can sense it that they have trust in me mm. and they want me to take this responsibility forward mm. it actually also reminds me in the corporate world you know where you have people senior people rather holding uh, senior designations they don't really want to leave that seat mm. um because for them that seat is a seat of authority a seat of power and for them it is a huge huge challenge to even think of leaving it mm. uh, so much so that they may not, they may not promote juniors or they may feel threatened by juniors who are you know highly talented as well we see this all the time and see we are actually losing on talent mm. if you consider yourself superior and you consider the others as inferior the other person who is on a lower position mm. who is your subordinate is also being mm. maybe the position is not high enough but he is also being and he may have the talent or skill which is slightly maybe maybe the talent that you don't have but if the intention is very pure that my company should grow mm. this team should win we should come up then you will not mind you would want to bring that subordinate you would want to use his talents mm. and that is why sometimes we really miss out on very very important feedbacks mm. because i think i know it all yeah. then i don't want to listen to the subordinate yeah. but he may have something very very profound to say or mm. sometimes they do mm. so i think the moment we are not attached to our label mm. we can really contribute a lot that's actually a very interesting thing because people who are in senior positions sometimes get so attached to that uh, designation that they may consider anybody who's junior inferior and may not be very receptive to feedback it may be like i know more much more than you yeah how can you say this to me yeah it's like i'm always right yeah i'm always right because i'm on a senior position i'm always right mm. and if there is somebody who is even voicing out their opinions they kind of feel threatened mm. and if the opinions is some but something which is really valuable and you can sometimes see that everybody in the uh, in the meeting kind of likes it the senior person starts to fear it you know yeah. that i'm losing my position and then they would just say no no i don't think it's such a good idea it's just you know when you're mm. attached to that label the intent is not very pure mm. then the contribution is not mm. whole hearted you know mm -hmm. you can contribute so much and that is why it's very good to see everybody as an equal of mm. course regard for the position is very very important mm. even for the subordinate you can give your opinion but if there is somebody who is on a senior position you should regard them mm. you should listen to their opinions even if you can't follow them immediately you should take the feedback mm. evaluate it try to bring it in your life mm. also to an extent that there's some protocol also of course we are equal but then if your boss enters you do offer him your chair if your mother in law enters you mm. would want to stand up and and offer your chair so these protocols still stay 
it's not that now that we are equal there is mm. no protocol mm. the protocol still stays but at the same time at the level of energy Hmm. It's not like you're inferior or superior, senior or junior. It's more like we respect each other. Yeah, you're also respecting that experience that they bring. Yeah. And you're not really looking at them as, like you said, superior or inferior. Yeah. Uh, sister, one more scenario that actually comes to my mind while you speak is, you know, in the corporate world, a lot of people jumping designations. Um, there is a race to the finish. You want um, a more powerful designation than the one you had before. For example, you may want to move from assistant manager to the manager, mm. to senior manager, to general manager. Um, and at mm. times you may not deserve it. Mm. But you're still in this hurry to get the next position. Yeah, what you're saying is right. There may be two reasons. One is when you're jumping this, you really think I am capable. Mm -hmm. and I don't have enough opportunities and then I look for another company which is fine because maybe that another company is giving me that position because position will bring you more decision power mm -hmm. it will bring you more authority bring you more power so you can contribute mm -hmm. so you think okay if this company is not offering me that designation maybe I can contribute better than another company but the other thing that you said is that they are not capable Hmm. So, when they are not capable and then they are jumping designations, then it is that hunger for power. Hmm. Then there is that hunger for recognition because they have a very low self-respect or maybe low self-worth. Hmm. And you know how sometimes when you introduce yourself hmm. even in society and the moment you say, okay, I am not vice president anymore but president, yeah. even if you are not capable but then the way you hmm. introduce yourself people start looking at you very differently. Mm. See, suddenly your worth increases, which is not self-worth because mm. again, it's an acquired label and that is why the fear of losing it. Mm. And then there is a lot of pressure because if you're not capable, then what will happen? Yeah. So the moment you get the label, a lot of appreciation, recognition, but if you're not capable and if you're not able to perform, very soon you will lose it. Mm. Even without losing the position, you will lose the respect, mm. the genuine respect. So it's sometimes good that that step by step journey, the step by step journey is also making us more capable till mm. we reach that designation. Mm. And if you come closer from the corporate world to home, you see positions in the family as oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You have uh, you have the father who sometimes assumed to be the head of the family. Yeah. And um, that can also have a sense of um, power yeah. <laughs> for the father as well, right? Yeah, it is actually, they may take it as sense of power. But if you mm. see, if it's the father, then it's sense of responsibility. Mm. Head of the family, responsible responsible for the finances, responsible for the discipline of the house, mm. responsible for bringing the children, the environment, everything. It's a lot more responsibility. But if you take it as a sense of power, mm. then again, the father may always feel that I'm right. Mm. Sometimes they would say, oh, I've seen more Sundays than you, yeah. <laughs> which means I'm more mature. Mm. I know it all. Mm. And if you don't see yourself as a being mm. and even children as beings, then what will happen, maybe the role is of a father and the role is of the child. But both the souls have a lot of knowledge, their own inherent traits, mm. personality, character, strengths and weaknesses. So they're just different. Mm. They're two beings who are different. But when you sit down and have a conversation mm. and both of them feel like this one feels that the sense of power that I am always right, then they can start controlling their own children mm. sometimes. Mm. And then the distance also between father and children sometimes can increase. Mm. But sometimes you hear this word generation gap. Yeah, yeah, you do. You, know, you say, oh, there's a big generation gap. I can't understand mm. them. And the child will say they cannot understand me. Actually, there is no generation gap. It's all like I am right mm. and you are wrong. And the sense of control, mm. they moving away, relationships becoming more and more fragile. Mm. So it's important that even at home, the role is different mm. and different roles bring different sense of responsibility. Mm. But we, if we see them as beings, it's mm. good. It's one time we went up to one of the dadis, Dadi Prakashmani, and she was then 
the administrative head of Brahma Kumaris, taking care of more than 6,000 centers in mm -hmm. India and abroad. Mm -hmm. And we would ask her that you're managing so much, how do you do it? You're the head of Brahma Kumaris. And she would say, but I don't consider myself as a head. Mm -hmm. Because if I consider myself as a head, I would have a headache. <laughs> Mm. And we could see because she didn't take mm. that sense of power from that. Mm. She was so light, carefree, yet managing everything so well. Mm. So what was it that she was doing in this particular role that really helped her to stay away from, you know, the, the power that is associated with the position? Uh, here, we don't even use the word like a leader mm. or, you know, even administrative head is just the title. But the word that we remember all the time so that we don't get stuck into this position mm. thing is instrument. Okay. Mm. I am the instrument so that I can contribute. Mm. Of course, I have a lot of sense of responsibility, but that ego should not come in, mm. that I am something. So every time I remember that I am instrument, he, the God is the one who is doing everything. Mm. I am just the trustee. Mm. I am just somebody who has to contribute. Then I think it's that position of self-respect and there is no ego in what you're doing. Mm. Can we bring this concept in our daily life system? I mean, can we look at ourselves being instruments um, at the workplace, at home, um, to kind of be free from this label of position? Yeah, even just like if the mother thinks that I am the instrument of this child. Mm. See, she will behave very differently with the child. One is, it's my child mm. and the other is, I am the instrument to take care of this child. It's a separate being. My mm. child is a separate being and I am the instrument to guide him, influence him, mm. be a backbone wherever he needs me, not to control him, mm. not to make him just like me. Mm. So, there's a difference. It's like you're not attached then mm. and you can actually play your role very, very well. Because when you're attached, then you you are always fearful mm. that if my child does not behave the way I want, then what will happen? Mm. But the moment you consider yourself as an instrument, your role is just to guide. Mm. And give. And give. <laughs> give unconditionally. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said, sister. Um, there's another label that I'd like to explore. And that's the label of your name. You know, when you're born, the first thing you get is your name, your surname. And at times, if you're born in a very prominent, affluent family, um, there's a burden of that name and mm. there's a huge pressure to live up to that name. Um, it can get very suffocating at times. Yeah, it does get very suffocating. I've actually met some people because the being who comes in that home is not just the body. Mm. That being has just inherited that label. Mm. And sometimes they may not have the capacity. Mm. But everybody expects so much out of them. So it's constantly living in the pressure. Mm. You know, it's like if you are walking normally and then somebody puts 20 kg on your head. Mm. And then if you have to walk, your speed will actually reduce. Mm. So if you put that load of mm. 20 kgs of the name in this case, they're not even able to perform to their potential. Mm. Actually, they can do a lot more. Mm. But sometimes the pressure of the name to live up to the name, to honor the name, it can get very, very suffocating. So in this case, I think that soul has to realize that even though I have inherited the name, it is okay. I am not the name. Mm. This is the name that I have inherited, but I am separate from the name and mm. I have to only perform to my full potential. Mm. It can also be the other way where sometimes you take the name, mm. the potential is not there, the capabilities mm. are not there, but you can just feel very superior, yeah. mm. misuse the name, take the privileges. Mm. So both sides you can see. Mm. So somebody who is the child of, uh, let's say, an effluent um, industrial family, uh, their name, therefore, and this is something that they must tell themselves, is the name of this body, this costume, and not me, will that be helpful for them? Yeah, because the separation is always very, very helpful. Mm. The separation always helps me to remain in that self-respect which is dependent on the original I, mm. which cannot change. Mm. So, uh, you know, something like, I am unique, I am special, mm. I am God's child, I am powerful. Mm. All this is what I am. Mm. And this is my name. Mm. This name definitely comes with some 
um, responsibility. But if you have very high self-respect, then it is possible for you to live up to that name also. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sister, there, is, there are also some people who have um, challenges associated with a stereotype associated with their name. Mm. You know, for example, um, I have a Christian name. <laughs> so every time I introduce myself, people know that I'm Christian. And uh, because they know that I'm Christian, you know, the next thing they assume is that, oh, so you're a non-vegetarian and oh, so you must be drinking. And it's a very hard um, perception to shake off. Mm. Uh, the stereotype associated with your name is, 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 is almost like you are this mm. uh, because you have this name. <laughs> yeah, and you haven't even met the person. Yeah. You don't know anything about them mm. and you just start perceiving them that way. Mm. It's like you start sending that energy. If somebody enjoys non-vegetarian and alcohol, they will think you are good. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. You are accepted. Yeah. Somebody who is against it, mm. even before they have met you, before there is any relationship, mm. you start sending the energy of rejection. Yeah. You are not good yeah. because you practice this. But you are a being mm. who has just acquired this name mm. and you may not inherit what is associated with that name. Mm. It is quite possible that you may be a Christian, mm. but you may not drink and you may not eat that. But yes, this is something again that we see in the society. Uh, another stereotype, you know, with some caste, yeah. they would say, oh, this, this particular person, they are very selfish. <laughs> It could be one they have mm. met like that, mm. just one in their lifetime mm. or sometimes you haven't met anyone. Mm. It's something that you've just heard from your friends, mm. from your family or even if you have met one, mm. doesn't mean everyone is like that. Mm. But if you start perceiving them that way, mm. it kind of harms my relationships mm. because relationship is not just the words that we are going to exchange. Mm. You know, for example, I'm going for a meeting mm. and you belong to that caste. And I've heard somewhere that, oh, people from this caste are very selfish. Now, what happens even mm. before we meet, mm. we begin that meeting. In my mind, I already have a thought that you're very selfish. Mm. What energy I'm sending you is it's not good energy. It's the energy of, um, you're not good. Mm. You're not something that I would call good. And then you come and meet. You can have the best of conversation. Mm. But the person has already received that energy and will not feel very comfortable in your presence. So I think when we meet people for the first time, we should not label them. Mm. Not even with the stereotypes that we have heard. Because it may be right for one person, it can be totally different for another person. Thank you for that sister. I think it was very, very liberating to know that you are beyond your... Uh, designation, you're beyond your position and you're beyond the, the, the power associated with your name or surname or stereotype associated with your name or surname. Thank you for joining us in a conversation today, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Om Shanti. So friends, if you are on a job hunt, keen to search for a more powerful designation than the previous one, I think it's first important to ask yourself why you are doing that. It could probably be because you want to fill a void inside, a void of getting respect from outside. Why don't you fill that void with spirituality and you won't need to search for, for a higher designation anymore? I do hope you enjoyed this conversation. Please join us in our next conversation. Take care.